Hi kids. Today we are going to see chapter 3. Continue chapter 3 homostasis in humans. Homostasis in humans. Okay, what is homostasis? Homostasis is the maintenance of the internal environment in our body. Internal environment, for example, body temperature. Our body temperature must maintain at 37 degrees Celsius or 36.9 degrees Celsius. Blood pressure, blood osmotic pressure, and the amount of water, amount of salt, all that must be maintained in our body. Okay, all this we call as homeostasis. Homeostasis is important for the cells in our body, body to function. Well, the human urinary system plays an important role in homeostasis. The human urinary system is made up of two kidneys that is located at the abdomen parts of the body, right kidney and left kidney. And here is the urinary bladder. Kidney help to regulate the balance of water and salt in the body. First we look at the structure of human kidney. Made up of three parts here. This is pelvis, medulla, and cortex. Kidneys filter blood and produce urine. Now we see the function of human kidney here. Kidney filter blood and produce urine. Kidney help to regulate the balance of water and salt in the body. Kidney extract excess water, salt, urea, drug and toxin from the body. Okay, so this is the function of the human kidney. Here when we see the human kidney here, is made up of about 1 million of nephrons. Okay, this is nephrons. Okay, one kidney is made up about of 1 million of nephrons. Nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. Okay, now we see the structure of one neuron. Okay, this is the structure of one nephron. Okay, nephron look like this. Okay, what I want you all to do now, you draw this in your exercise book. Okay, draw this. And then I'll explain about this one by one. We draw first this lecture. Okay. Okay, now we name it one by one. 
this one the structure here like a cup this one we call as Bowman capsule okay Bowman capsule this is the one Bowman capsule okay label one by one we have drawn that all these okay now label Bowman capsule which I will go one by one slowly Now, second one, like the shape of U here, the shape. This one we call as loop of Henley. Okay, label this now. Okay, next is the proximal convoluted tube. Is this one? Okay, label this. This is the proximal convoluted tubule. This is distal convoluted tubule. Okay, distal convoluted tubule is this one. And this is the collecting duct. Okay, collecting duct. So these are the parts of the nephron that you must know. Okay, I repeat. This is Bowman's capsule. This is proximal convoluted tubule. This is loop of Henle. This is distal convoluted tubule. And this is this is collecting. Duck. Okay, these are the parts of the nephron that you must know. Okay, now we see one part of the nephron that we call as Bowman's capsule. Okay, we look at the Bowman's capsule structure like this. There is a Blood vessel going into the Bowman's capsule. Okay, all this is the blood vessel. That blood vessel that going into the Bowman's capsule we call as afferent atriole. Afferent atriole. The blood vessel that is coming out from the Bowman's capsule we call as efferent Atrial. Okay, afferent, then efferent. If you see the structure of the afferent, the diameter is bigger than efferent. Okay. And the blood vessel inside here, we call it as glomerulus. Okay, the blood vessel inside here we call as glomerulus. The space between this, the Bowman's capsule is made up of two layers of cells, two layers of cells. Huh? So the space between these two layers, we call it as capsular space. Capsular space. Because of these two layer, we call Bowman's capsule as filtration membrane. Okay, we also call it as filtration membrane. So here is the efferent atriole. Here is the efferent atriole. Glomerulus. And this is the capsular. There are three basic processes that carry out by a nephron to produce urine. Number one, ultrafiltration process. Number two, reabsorption process. Number three, secretion process. 
So by this three process only the nephron will produce urine. Okay, now we will look at this process one by one. Now we look at the ultra filtration process first. This ultra filtration process happen in Bowman capsule. Under high pressure, blood under high pressure will enter the Bowman capsule. Diameter of afferent atrial is bigger than diameter of efferent atrial. As the blood enter glomerulus, high pressure here because there the diameter here bigger here smaller. High pressure here force the tube from here to enter the capsular space. This fluid will be called as glomerular filtrate. And this fluid after from the capsular space will move to the next tubule here. The okay, this fluid here will go to the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, this is what happened in the Bowman capsule for the ultra filtration. When we see this glomerular filtrate, this glomerular filtrate contains Composition same as the blood plasma, but does not contain red blood cell and plasma protein. It contains things like water, glucose, amino acid, urea, salt. Okay, this is glomerular filtrate composition. Reabsorption takes place at renal fibule. Renal fibule, that means at proximal convoluted fibule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted fibule, and connecting duct. So, all this place, the reabsorption process takes place. Now, we are going to look one by one at the fibule. See what happened at each table here. When we look at the proximal convoluted tubule, it we absorb from the glomerular filtrate 65% of the water from it, 100% glucose and amino acid from the glomerular filtrate, 65% of sodium ions. And other ions also, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, calcium, and magnesium. So all these will be reabsorbed by the proximal convoluted tubule to the bloodstream. In the loop of Henle, loop of Henle reabsorb water. Sodium and chloride ion. Distal convoluted tubule absorb more water, sodium and chloride ion. Collecting dust absorb more water and salt into the bloodstream. After leaving the collecting dust. The urine will flow to ure ureter, urinary bladder, ureta, and will be excreted as urine. Okay, from here, the collecting duct here, 
the urine will go to urethra, ure ureter. I repeat from the collecting duct here, go through the ureter, go to the urinary bladder and be excreted from the urethra as urine. The last process is secretion. Secretion happens when the urine are secreted from the body. Secretion takes place along the renal tubules. Now we see the negative feedback mechanism for homeostasis. Okay, this is for example, from normal value, if it go excess, for example, more water in the body. When there is more water in the body, the correct mechanism, example, kidney will absorb less water to the bloodstream. So then it will go to normal value. Let's say there is <coughs> lack, less water in the body. It means our body is not enough of water. The correct mechanism is kidney will absorb more water into the bloodstream. Then it will go to normal value. This is what happened. Example, negative feedback mechanism during homeostasis. Okay, look at the, this word, osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is the process of maintaining the water content of the blood at a constant level. That means it maintains the content of water in the blood at a constant level. Okay, that is osmoregulation. Osmo here refer to water. Okay, we see the role of kidney in homeostasis. In this process of homeostasis at the kidney, involve hormone ADH, okay, antidiuretic hormone ADH. This ADH we have learned before is produced in the hypothalamus at the brain. And will be released by the posterior pituitary gland. If you have forgot about this, please do revision about the pituitary gland. Okay, first we see what happened during this homeostasis process. First, the osmoreceptor cells, osmoreceptor cells in the hypothalamus brain eh, will detect the changes of the amount of water in our body that we call as blood osmotic pressure. Okay, blood osmotic pressure is the amount of water contained in our blood. So this is the first step. Osmoreceptor cells will detect the changes. So now we see the regulation of osmotic pressure during the formation of urine. First, the osmotic pressure normal. And then it increase. Increase in blood osmotic pressure. There is less water in the blood. What happened? The osmoreceptor in the brain stimulates. Pituitary gland to release ADH hormone. The ADH hormone increase. When the ADH hormone increase, this will increase the permeability of the distal convoluted tubules and collecting duct. This will increase the water reabsorption. 
negative feedback, decrease in blood osmotic pressure. Urine will be concentrated and deeper in color and will go back to normal. This is the negative feedback happen when increase in blood osmotic pressure. I repeat, blood osmotic pressure increase, osmoreceptor stimulate pituitary gland to release ADH hormone, ADH hormone increase. When the ADH hormone increase, the permeability of the distal formulated tubules and collecting duct also increase. This will increase the water reabsorption and the blood osmotic pressure will go to normal. Okay, now we see what happens if the blood osmotic pressure decrease. Blood osmotic pressure decrease, that means there is more water in the blood. When the blood osmotic pressure decrease, osmoreceptors in the brain are less stimulated and release less ADH hormones. This will decrease the permeability of the distal convoluted tubules and collecting duct. Decrease, this will decrease the water reabsorption. Negative feedback, increase the blood osmotic pressure. So the urine will be contain more water and lighter in color. Okay, this is what happens when the blood osmotic pressure decrease. The kids, how to pronounce this word? This is homeostasis. Homeostasis. And this is pituitary. Pituitary. That's the correct way to pronounce this word. I repeat. Homeostasis. Okay, now we see about the kidney damage. Why the kidney can be damaged? Anyone got the answer? Kidney can be damaged due to disease or injury. Next question. Can a person survive with one kidney? What is the answer? Yeah, the answer is yes. A person can survive with one kidney. But what if both kidneys stop functioning? Can they survive? Okay, if both kidneys fail to function, that will be very dangerous. So if both kidneys stop functioning, there is a treatment for that. Okay, that is hemodialysis. Okay, hemodialysis treatment. In this hemodialysis treatment, this is the process of filtering the blood. That is first one. Second treatment is the kidney transplant. That means the person get the kidney from other person. Okay, these are the two treatments with the kidney, both kidney damage. Now we look at the regulation of blood sugar level. If the glucose level in the blood increase, Pancreas will release insulin hormone. Pancreas will release insulin hormone to convert the glucose to glycogen. Glycogen will be kept in the liver. 
if the glucose level in the blood is less, pancreas will secrete blue carbon hormone to, to change the glycogen back to glucose. Okay, this is what happened for the blood glucose, blood sugar level. Two hormones involved, insulin and glucagon, released by the pancreas. Blood glucose level high can cause diabetes mellitus. Okay, this is the bit called diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus happen due to defect of production or release of insulin. That means something went wrong and the pancreas cannot secrete enough insulin. All defects in reception of insulin by target cell. That means the insulin cannot be received by the target cell. Or this can cause the diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus can be controlled by taking medicine. Maybe in the form of injection of insulin or taking tablets. Number two, by following proper diet. That means they must eat less carbohydrate food, carbohydrate and fat. And number three, do exercise, regular exercise. For diabetes mellitus, there is no treatment for it. The only thing we can do is control it. Okay, no medicine to avoid this disease. We can only control it by these three methods. Okay, now we see the regulation of body temperature. Our body temperature must maintain at 36.9 degrees. Celsius. Changes of temperature in the internal body will be detected by the thermoreceptor. Thermo, thermo is for the heat. Thermoreceptor. In the skin and in the hypothalamus brain. Okay, first we look at the structure of human skin. This is erector muscle. Sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland. And sweat gland. This is sweat duct. For This is nerve, blood capillary. This is blood capillary under the skin. Okay, this is the structure of human skin as a revision. Hope you all can still remember. Okay, now we see the regulation of temperature again. Now we see by blood, blood vessel under the skin. Eh? When the temperature, body temperature rise, vasodilation occur. What is vasodilation? Blood vessel expand. That means blood vessel become bigger. When blood vessel become bigger, more blood will flow there. And then, this will increase the amount of Blood. Uh, but too, sometimes we see when after you run, especially if you got a fair skin like Chinese student, 
your face will become red uh, because of this more blood flow to the skin. When more blood flow to the skin, it increases the heat radiated and lost. So more heat will be lost through the skin. Okay, uh, this is the one by the blood. Okay, this one, uh, the blood vessel under the skin will expand. So, more heat will be radiated out from the skin. Now, we we'll see when the temperature drops, that means surrounding us very cold and our, feet, our body feels cold, what sort of constriction will occur? What sort of constriction occur? When the temperature, body temperature drop, also constriction of the, that means the blood vessel contract. Contract means it becomes very small. So this will decrease the amount of blood in the blood vessel. When the amount of blood decrease, so less heat will be radiated and lost. So we keep our Temperature, body temperature. We keep the heat in the body. Here, this blood vessel will contract during cold. When the body feels cold, this blood vessel contract. So less heat will be radiated out. Okay, now we look at the second one, sweat gland. How the sweat gland can maintain our body temperature? When the body temperature rise, sweat gland will secrete sweat. When the sweat evaporates, it needs the heat to evaporate. So it takes the heat from our body. So it absorbs heat from the skin, from our body. So the body temperature will drop. Okay, this is how the sweat gland will maintain our body temperature. When the body temperature drops, that means surrounding is very cold and body temperature drops, sweating does not occur. To keep the heat in the body. Next, we look at the erector pili muscle in the skin. Erector pili muscle. This one, the erector pili muscle. This one will contract and relax. When it contracts, this hair will rise. It goes up. Huh? When it relax, this hair will lower, become lower, lie down. Okay, that is the function of the erector pili muscle here. To control the hair. I repeat, when it contract, the hair Rise. When it relax, the hair will be low. Okay, lie on the skin. Okay, when the temperature rise, erector pili muscles relax. This is lower the skin and warm air is not trapped next to the skin. Air is a bad conductor of heat. So, when it lower to the skin, less air will be trapped. So, the temperature, the temperature of the body can be low and the heat is free to escape from the skin.
when the internal body temperature drops, erector muscle contract to raise the skin hair. So warm air is trapped next to the skin. This will keep the body heat. So this is how the erector pili in the skin keep the temperature, maintain our body temperature. Okay, now skeletal muscle. We see how our skeletal muscle can maintain the heat, the body temperature. When the skeletal muscle shivering, it produces heat. So that's how it keeps the heat in the body. When the temperature is high, shivering does not occur. We only shivering when we feel cold. So when we when we shivering, heat is produced in our body. Okay, now we look at the adrenal and thyroid glands, how it controls our body temperature. When the temperature rises, adrenal and thyroid glands are less stimulated. So less hormone will be produced. Less adrenaline and thyroxine hormone will be produced. This will lower the metabolic rate and the heat won't be generated. So now we see what happens, how the adrenal and thyroid gland do when the temperature drops. When the temperature drops, adrenal and thyroid glands are stimulated. To produce more adrenaline and thyroxine hormone. This will increase the metabolic rate in our body and more heat is generated for the body. Okay, this is what happens when the temperature is low. Take it, the regulation of body temperature. Only until here, we learn until here. Okay, now we are going to see about rust. All of you know about rust, right? Is it good or bad for health? Do medicine contains drugs? Yes, medicine contains drugs. But it is in a small quantities. That is not harmful to the body and we must take it under doctor's prescription. medical field, doctor use drugs to release pain and to kill microorganisms. Penicillin drugs are used as antibiotics to kill microorganisms. Okay, now we see drugs abuse. Drugs can influence person's thinking, feeling, and behavior. That means they don't be a normal person. They behave different. Like uh, maybe they can get angry very fast and sometimes they don't know. They don't realize what they are doing. Drugs can affect the functioning of our nervous system and endocrine system. 
nervous system and endocrine system. Drugs also can alter brain function and the rate of neurotransmitter release by the nervous system. Drugs abuse can affect the physical and mental health of the person. Drugs can cause addiction. Addiction means you must always take it. Okay, addiction. You can meet the addict to the drug. Okay, these are what happen for the drug abuse. There are four types of drugs. Stimulant, depressants, hallucinogens and narcotics. Okay, these are the four types of drugs. Now we'll see one by one. Okay, now we look at the uh, stimulant types of drugs first. Stimulant. Example of stimulant drugs are cocaine, nicotine, amphetamine, amphetamine, and caffeine. Okay, when we see the effects on the body coordination, it increases the activity of the central nervous system. Speed up the body process, increase the pulse rate and the blood pressure. Okay, this is what the stimulants drug will do. Now we look at the depression types of drugs. The examples are alcohol and barbiturates. It slows down the activity of the central nervous system or transmission of nerve impulse. Slow down activities of the heart, respiratory system and the skeletal muscles. And make the user less anxious. Now we see the hallucinogens, example are LSD. These hallucinogen drugs can make user to see, hear and perceive things that do not exist. That means illusion. Something is not there but they can see as though the thing is there. Illusion. Can change one's thoughts and emotions. Okay, they are thinking of the different. They will be very emotional. Okay, there is hallucinogen drugs effects on the body condition. Okay, now we look at the narcotic drug. Example of the narcotic drugs are heroin, morphine and opium. Okay, there are effects on the body coordination, relief pain. And slow down the brain function. So these are the types of drugs and the effects on the body coordination. Question 1. Explain the meaning of homeostasis. Question 2. List the functions of the gene.
Question 3. Draw and label the structure of the electron. Question 4. Name the three processes to produce urine by an electron. Question 5. Explain about Bowman's capsule. Question 6. Explain ultrafiltration process in the electron. And the last one, question 7. Explain the reabsorption process by metrons.